Greetings all, Last Outrider here with a special request video. If you are not aware, anybody can request me to make a video on virtually any topic. Even if it's not 40k related, or Warhammer related, or even gaming related. You just have to go make a donation, tell me the subject, and I will go to work. In this case, the request was about an article that was written on January 14th of this year, titled, In the Grim Darkness of Warhammer 40K's Far Future, There Are Only Men, and It's Terrible. This was written for The Mary Sue. If you don't know, that is a website that focuses on gender issues in sci-fi and gaming. Okay, so they wanted to know, what was my thoughts on this article? To give you an idea, I'll read you the beginning of the article. Hi, my name is James, and I love Warhammer. Warhammer, for those of you who aren't aware, is one of the longest-running and most popular miniature games. Created and developed by Games Workshop and split into two settings. The fantasy version, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, formerly Warhammer Fantasy Battle, something I'm still very upset about, and sci-fi setting, Warhammer 40,000, aka Warhammer 40k or just 40k. While I used to play fantasy, and still theoretically do, even if I haven't touched my collection since the shift to Age of Sigmar, this video will primarily focus on the more popular and widespread Warhammer 40k. What is the focus of this article, you ask? Well, if you love something, you must be willing to criticize it and acknowledge its flaws. And while there are many flaws with Warhammer, the one we are here to examine today is gender representation of the grim darkness of the far future. You'd better settle in, because this is a doozy. Hmm. Okay, then he goes on to say, let's cut straight to the heart of the matter, with the biggest and most well-known aspect of Warhammer 40k universe, the Space Marines. The Space Marines, extremely quick version, Seven foot tall, genetically enhanced soldiers are easily the most iconic army in 40k and also by far the most widespread. And they can only be men. Right. <clears throat> so let's get into my opinion of this article. A. It is factually incorrect. Now, I don't know how many people have viewed my Rogue Trader series, but Warhammer is a universe which has been constantly evolving and retconning and changing over the last 25 plus years. So let's start with what it was at the beginning. In the beginning, Space Marines were all men. This is true. Space Marines also did not have Primarchs. They also did not have a gene seed. They also were not genetically engineered super soldiers. Space Marines in the beginning uh, were more akin to Necromunda's hive gangers that were recruited. Ah, oh, Sardaukar. If you know Dune, Sardaukar is what the Space Marines were based upon. They were criminals that were the worst of the worst, put through insane regimen, training regimens, and the 5% that managed to survive became Space Marines. That's why they were so tough. They then tended to live in monastic fortresses, which were basically, they continued to live in prison. And since they came from prison, which is not a co-ed environment, apparently, uh, they were all males. If you look at Space Marines from that standpoint, then it makes absolute sense why they were all men. And the term brother or battle brother was to denote their membership in a monastic organization, not an actual genetic relationship. 
as it does now. Uh, to be fair, the Sisters of Battle also existed in equally large numbers and possibly even going through the same training regimen <coughs> to become sisters, and they lived in nunneries. And they... So that would have been 50% of the storyline right there. So then, in that case, in the beginning, gender representation would have been equal. They both would have just been the dregs of society that went through horrific, nightmarish training, and the survivors either became sisters or uh, brothers. And that's fine. Uh, later on, I believe it was in second edition, or at some point, they, they introduced the Primarch concept. At this point in time, Space Marines became eunuchs. They were selected as prepubescent boys for the specific purpose that they had to be prepubescent before any uh, of the gender or sexual characteristics began to develop, which in and of itself would have made the implantation of the gene seed impossible. So you could say that you could choose prepubescent girls then, equally as well as prepubescent boys. And I've actually had that discussion a long time ago, where I don't see why it would be a difference. The, the key point here is that they need to be before puberty set in, before any sexual characteristics started to develop. As long as they went through the training and they survived, they could be selected. Now, the end result of the gene seed implantation process is an astarte, a space marine. But this person no longer has any sexual concept at all or characteristics other than the fact that you could say that they're tall and muscled and you could say that by default that would be a masculine uh, appearance. At that point then you're not talking about gender representation, you're talking about femininity. In other words, why aren't space marines more feminine looking? Which is an entirely different question. And I believe it is obviously why they're not more feminine looking. But I would say that they could easily be prepubescent boys or girls. And at the end of the process, you, in, you end up with an asexual organism that is neither male nor female, nor has any gender concept at all, or any concepts of sexual relations, or any sexual desires, or any concept of gender roles, period. When you read the fluff, even, or even the novels, they barely distinguish between males and females in human populations. Uh, I mean, they have to actually think about it and say, okay, uh, that's a male, that's a female, I guess there's some difference between the two, don't really understand what it is, but the culturally, they humans think there's a difference, so I have to um, account for that. That's how an Astarte looks at genders. They have none. So if you want to go into gender representation, you can say, they are neutral. They are not all men. The statement that they are all men is patently false. Uh, because they've got no genitalia at all. So if you're going to say they're all male, that really comes more from the aspects of how humans look at space marines, not how a space marine looks at itself. And the only reason brother is still used is from the rogue trader days when they were in a monastic brotherhood and possibly from the concept that uh, the primarchs uh, I don't know you know what you, you, <laughs> I'm not even going to make that assumption that the primarchs had a gender we're going we could there is some uh, reference that they happen to be anatomically correct but that may only be those the in the 20 of them they might they might all be quite different. 
So they do then take a genetic history from the Primarch, and if that happened to be male, then they would... Yeah, I, I would still say they're eunuchs, and as eunuchs and creatures with no genetic identity at all, I mean sexual identity at all, they are not all men. Nor would they think of themselves as that way. At least that's how I would answer this. Now, in terms of the models, let's look at it from a business standpoint. And you're going to find this today. There is an outmoded marketing concept that male figures sell better than female figures if you have, if you have um, men buying them. And that is the concept that men won't buy dolls. They want to buy action figures. All of the marketing data on this says this is wrong. And you can see this even happening as recently as the Star Wars Force Awakens movie, when they originally refused to release any Ray figures. They only released one Ray uh, scavenger figure, I think, which she had the helmet on, and you couldn't tell whether it was male or female. It was androgynous, just like the Space Marines are androgynous. Um, and that only recently changed after it was pointed out that that's bullshit. And if you want to look at the marketing data, I would say look at any of the Japanese anime uh, figures, selling data, marketing data. This is an outmoded concept which should be rejected in full. Now, perhaps Games Workshop's marketing department still accepts that and believes that masculine figures sell more than feminine figures, if that is the case, then they've made a mistake and they will pay for it through falling figure sales, which they are currently experiencing and scratching their heads over. Perhaps they would fix that if they had made Stormcast Eternals less masculine. In fact, I believe if they had released Stormcast Eternals but he, he, they're based on Sigmar, so what? Um, as an all-feminine, more feminine-looking line, or things like that, they would probably have had a far greater acceptance of the Age of Sigmar uh, than, than they have releasing it the way they are. But that's just my... I base this based upon the marketing data uh, in Japan with all of their enemy is mostly, you could say, female-dominated. And it is still extremely popular and has been for decades. So that's my view on that. So other than that, you could say the Imperial Guard. Well, that can be male or female. But yes, the, the figures that are represented tilt tend to be more male-oriented. Um, personally, when I built my, my Imperial Guard army, I had the special order... Uh, using Necromunda figures, which I used for the to represent them as catechins, and um, you had uh, Rocket Girl, and um, there was another one, another Imperial Guard uh, female. I also had the female Commissar, which I used as the officer. So, in keeping, that was at the time when. My sisters and Inquisitor Army had to use the Fraternus Militia. That's no longer an option in the game, so I turned them into an Imperial Guard regiment. If you want to, you can still do it, and it's extremely popular amongst 40k players to try to make uh, female-focused armies. So, hey, you have them out there also making Hello Kitty and My Little Pony armies. So, you know, the player can make virtually whatever they want. I refer to mine because I didn't have to do any customization to make my army. I don't believe it's a problem. <coughs> Sorry. I also believe that there is a, a narrative in 40K which focuses on physical combat. 
and physical combat is definitely more of a male-oriented perspective of the world. That being said, um, emotional or moral combat and, and conflict, I should say, is equally valid in the 40k universe. This then comes down to the ability of the writer pool. Can they represent moral and ethical conflicts as well as they represent physical conflicts? It takes a far greater writing skill to do that, and I think that's where they're running into, into difficulty. It's much easier to write bolter porn than it is to write a deep ethical or moral dilemma, which would represent another equally valid form of, of conflict that could appear in 40K. Now, how they want to represent that, I'm not sure, but I don't think this has anything to do with gender representation. Yeah, that's my take on that article. Uh, other people can read it. I hope you enjoy it. Until next time, bye.